the design has remained unchanged for generations. Historically, these traps would be set in lines, often along riverbeds, for up to 50 miles. Whole families work these trap lines. Trapping remains an integral part of the inner way of life. Making this trap is a lot of effort, but it will last several years. It's cunningly fashioned so that once set, the animal can only reach the bait from one direction, which will trigger the upper lock to fall and crush it. <laughs> Daniel, comment ça La mort. On va sentir le, la peau là-bas. Oui. Perdrie. On va monter ici. Puis on va Ça, ça va tomber. D'accord. Il est, il est mort. Il est mort dans le coup. Afterwards, a trek across the frozen lake to one of Daniel's many fishing holes. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> the, have you got the fish or has it got you? The fish has been hooked for some time and is half dead. That is a monster fish. Blimey. That easily weighs 30 pounds. That's a Kokomesh lake trout. I wondered what it was they were going to catch with such big hooks. Well, you know, this is one place you don't have to exaggerate about the size of the fish. That's a monster. God, grief. <laughs> Fantastic. You got one? Yeah. The next day we checked the deadfall trap and we'd got a martin. There's still plenty of them in these forests. Ptarmigan are beautifully camouflaged and equally as well equipped as we are with finely splayed and feathered feet that act like their own little snowshoes. But with an Inu's sharp eye, they're easy game. Can I take some of those feathers from you? Yeah. Merci. One of the best Montagnier tips I've come across is to take the down feathers from the ptarmigan and shove them in your gloves on a cold day. That way, you've got the original down-filled glove. It's fantastic. Merci. Mm The traditional accompaniment to ptarmigan, or any Inu dish, is bannock. This was introduced by Scottish trappers and proved an immediate hit. To make it, mix two cups of flour with a pinch of salt and two teaspoons of baking soda. Add water, shape and bake on top of the sheet metal stove for about 10 minutes. Really messy. Mm, C'est excellent, Pilamine. That's really good. <laughs> mm. 
This is a typical hunter's meal. The ptarmigan's easily caught, it's cooked very simply, and it tastes great. The only thing lacking is a bit of conversation, and that's because I can't speak Montagnier. We going Chichwe. <laughs> <laughs> Cold, emptiness, the stillness of snow, and the clear northern light. There's a majesty to these barren lands, and take it from me, living in a wigwam, with or without pocket hunters, is surprisingly comfortable. The stove to keep you warm, the fragrance of the spruce bough bed, and if you're lucky, you can witness one of the most spectacular sights on earth. The Innu live in an environment where the forces of nature can overwhelm you at any moment. Today, most live in centrally heated houses, just like any Canadian. But you neglect nature at your peril. If you travel in the barren lands, you'd be a fool not to take advantage of modern technology like this, just as the Innu do. But don't be seduced by it. Sooner or later, things go wrong. And that's when you realise that the old knowledge is still the key to survival here. 